Hi friends, welcome to Classic Education YouTube channel. Let's learn something about the global grouping. Okay, so there are various groupings in the world. These groupings are made by different countries. Different countries come together and they form some of the groups. These groups are based on some of the ideologies, some of the concerns, and they are based on some of the issues, right? There are various groupings like ASEAN is there, uh, BIMSTEC is there, G77, G7, likewise there are hundreds of thousands of groupings are there. All of these groupings are concerned about some of their uh, common interests. Okay, This ASEAN, it is related to the regional development, BIMSTEC, it is also related to the regional development as well as the security in the sea as well as on the land. Right. There are uh, other G77. It is also a group of 77 countries. They are concerned about their poverty and their developmental issues. They raise their uh, major uh, voices in the United Nations Assembly meetings. Okay. These are the uh, groupings. These groupings, as I have said, they have different concerns of their own. Right. But today we are going to learn about one such grouping. It is called as the group of seven. This is the G7 grouping. Let's understand and let us try to understand what this grouping is, what are their major concerns, what this grouping has been in the past, what it has done in the past and what it has been doing and what it is going to do in the future. So this is what we will be analyzed in today's video. Okay. First, let us learn about the grouping, introduction to this grouping. This is the intergovernmental political forum. That means it is the you know body of uh, different countries. They you know it is organized based on the political issues. Then there are, as the name itself suggests, it is the group of seven. That means group of seven countries. It is the G7. What are the, those seven members? Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, United Kingdom and the United States of America. These are the seven members in the grouping. But there is one more additional member that is the European Union, EU. This is also a member of this grouping but this is counted as non enumerated member it is regarded as the non enumerated member this terminology or the this phrase non enumerated member indicates that though it is a member it is not counted so if you include the uh, european union in this grouping there are eight members but since it is a non enumerated member its you know count is not taken but it is just pronounced as the group of seven members Okay, it is a the effectively this non enumerate non enumerated member effectively means that it is not counted in the name. Okay, then Russia. So Russia has a very different journey in this grouping. For uh, for some time it was a part of this grouping and for for other time it was expelled out of this grouping. It has very interesting story uh, with respect to the group of seven uh, countries. It was a member as a part of the G8. Initially, this grouping was called as the G8 or the group of eight. But because of the removal of the Russia from this grouping, it became the G7. Okay, Russia was the member of this grouping from 1997 to 2014. That means almost for 17 years, it was the part of this grouping. So later on, it was removed. These members are the world's largest IMF advanced economies. This is very important. There are only seven countries. All of these seven member countries of G7 are they are financially or economically very well developed. They are the richest and the la economically largest countries in the IMF, you know, grouping. Okay, they also are the liberal democracies. If you take the examples of these groupings, Canada, United States, United Kingdom, France, Germany, Japan. Right, all of these countries have the democracy in their political system. That means they have the well-established democrat democratic principles. Okay, that is the liberal. They are the liberal democracies. Then these members maintain mutually close political, economic, social, legal, 
environmental, military, religious, cultural and diplomatic relations. All of these seven countries ha have their cordial relations uh, among themselves okay, with respect to politics or economics or society, legal or environmental issues. If you take all of these examples, they have very well uh, collaboration and they have very, co uh, very well established cooperation in these areas. This has become, this group, group of seven has become the formal high level profile venue for discussing and coordinating solutions to the major global issues. Why this grouping has been made? It is concerned because it is concerned with some of the global issues, ongoing global issues. What are these you know, pressing issues at the global level? They will be taken up as the agenda of this meet, uh, meeting of group of seven countries. Okay, uh, these issues are especially in the areas of trade, security, economics and climate change. See, if you take these examples like trade, security, environmental issues and the climate change, these are the burning issues in today's world, right? All the you know developed countries, they want to establish the free trade across the world, but the developing countries, they are facing some of the troubles with respect to the free trade. Okay, there are some concerns of poor countries as well as the developed countries with respect to the security, Inter whether it is, you know, internal security or the external security, both type of securities need the very close coordination among the different countries, right? Then economics. Today's world is the global economy. That means whole global is interconnected. We have the, you know, integrated economy with the world. For that matter, the countries which have, you know, open economy, all of them have the uh, co uh, coordination with the global economy. Whatever happens in one country, that will affect the economical developments in the another country. For example, today the war is going on between the Russia and the Ukraine. But Ukraine's economy is affected. But that effect on U Ukraine economy will indirectly or directly affect the Indian economy also with respect to the food security or job creation or import of the necessary goods. Right, climate change, it is also a pressing global issue. Uh, the pollution in one country will lead to pollution in another country also. So this climate or the environment, it is you know, barrier free. All the air is mixed, whatever the pollutants they are you know, uh, emitted in the one country, they will become the major pollutants in another country. See, these are the pressing issues at the international level. This group of seven will take up such issues and they will try to find the solutions to such issues. Now, what is the strength of this organization? What, the, with respect to the population, with respect to the you know economic size of these countries, what the number tells? Let us look into that aspect. As of the 2020, okay, this is the 220, uh, 2020 figure. Okay, according to this you know data, this G20 accounts for collectively these seven countries plus European Union account for 50 percent of the global net wealth. Right, 50% of the global net worth that is 418 trillion dollars. 420 R. See, let us say the global net worth, net wealth is the 840 trillion dollars. Out of 840 trillion dollars, 418 trillion dollars is owned by these seven countries. That means 50% of the global net wealth is owned by these seven countries. See, uh, uh, around 32 to 46 percent of the global GDP, it is, you know, contributed by these seven countries. It's a huge number, right? F 32 to 46, you'll see, based on different criteria, based on the different, you know, data by the different, you know, uh, organizations, there is a variation in the contribution of these countries to the global GDP. But the contribution varies between 32 to 46 percent of the global GDP. Then these countries account for 10 percent of the world's population. See, now we have more than 7 billion population in the world. Out of that, you know, 10 percent, it comes from the seven countries. 21 percent of the global carbon dioxide emissions. It is very important fact, right? Poorer countries, because of their low economic development, because of the low resource use, they are emitting less compared to the developed economies. Developed economies are recognized based on their industrial development. Industrial development means burning of more and more fossil fuels. Burning of more and more fossil fuels will lead to the more and more carbon dioxide emissions. These advanced economies, they contribute 21% of the global carbon dioxide emission. That means around 
one quarter of the total emission comes from the G7 countries. This is what the number tells about the these seven countries. Now, G7 is not based on a treaty. They have not signed any of the treaties. There is no charter or there is no legal document which binds these countries. They have come together based on some of the common issues. They, they started to collaborate themselves and they, they have established one convention and year after year they are meeting and they are finding the solutions. But there is no agreement between them. Because of no written agreement among themselves, right? they do not have the permanent secretariat. So if there was a written charter, they would have established one uh, secretariat, like they, they would have gone there every year, they have, would have met in the same secretariat. But it is not a based uh, treaty-based organization. See, it also does not have the, any permanent secretariat. Just remember, but this presidency or the, the presidency of this you know, grouping will change every year. That means the presidency rotates annually among the members. Among these seven members, the host will be different. One year, this year, Germany was the host. Next year, Japan will be the host. After in 2024, another country will be the host. That means this presidency will be changing or it will be rotating annually. But the presiding state sets the group's priorities. This group has the priorities like security, economic development, right? They are their priorities. But these priorities are annually fixed by the presiding country. This year, Japan, sorry, Germany was the presiding country. It has set some of the priorities. For this year, decarbonization, food security, imposition of some sanctions on the Russia, these are the priorities of this grouping this year. But these priorities will change year after year according to the presiding country's you know, uh, views right it has catalyzed or spearheaded the several major global initiatives this grouping has taken some of the global initiatives let us look into the those in it, uh, initiatives okay it has taken efforts to combat the hiv or aids pandemic that means financially it has contributed money to research and development right it has con contributed the scientific knowledge also to find the uh, vaccination for the AIDS uh, disease. Then it has provided the financial aid to the developing countries. Being the seven richest countries of the world, they have looked into the developing countries issues also. They have donated financially to these you know, developing countries to aid their economic development. Then it has addressed the climate change through the 2015 Paris Agreement. That means this grouping will facilitate the implementation of the provisions of the Paris Agreement. Okay, the one more major fact, very important fact about this you know, uh, organization is that whatever the decisions are taken by these G7 countries, they are not legally binding. Right? This is very interesting. Though they you know, meet every year, they take up the very serious issues, they find the solutions how to uh, you know, uh, uh, solve some of the difficult issues like the climate change. But these decisions are not legally binding on the members. They will come and they decide, they will try to reduce the carbon dioxide emission. But if the particular country, if, country, if does not reduce the carbon dioxide, there is no you know, punishment for that country because it those decisions are not legally binding okay this is very important you know factual information associated with this organization please remember that fact now let us understand how this grouping came into existence what were the circumstances what were the initial members let us try to look into that aspect see i have written different names here g4 g5 g6 g7 and g8 after g8 now it is again g7 it's a very interesting development of this you know grouping let's uh, look into this why it was called g4 why it was g5 the name itself suggests it is the group of g4 it is the group of five countries group of six countries that means year after year with the development of a particular country with the uh, widened you know areas of concern of this grouping there is increasing number of members in this grouping that is why there is four five six seven eight and again group of seven uh, countries now what is the origin the concept of the forum for the capitalist world this is very important phrase capitalist worlds major industrialized countries emerged before the 1973 oil crisis see the 
era between 1945 and 1940 1991 1945 to 1991 this is regarded as the cold era or the cold war era there were hot wars there were two world wars which were fiercely fought among different countries they have caused the devastating impact on the humanity as well as on the economic development of various countries right because of those wars still countries are suffering in some of the areas see those you know wars world war one and world war two one and two after end of these world wars there was one more war called as the cold war the period of those that cold war was between 1945 and 1991 that means it started in 1945 and ended in 1991 with the collapse of ussr or disintegration of the ussr country okay or the fall of the berlin, berlin wall or disintegration of the ussr all of them defined the you know end of the cold war era in the world so this grouping was established during the cold war what was this war it is a war it was fought between two group of the countries one group was the capitalist group and another group was the communist group there were you know there were fights there were you know mutinies there were secret you know weapon smuggling there were secret uh, conspiracies various things were going on behind the scene but uh, on the screen or before the screen there in there was nothing right there was no hot war because of those you know secret initiatives secret you know operations it was called as the cold war so during this cold war this you know organization took birth so that is why it is called as the capitalist world's major industrialized world these countries all the seven countries they belong to the capitalist world that means they believe in the free market economy they believe in the ownership of private property the state will not own much of the property that means they provide more and more importance to the privatization of the poverty uh, sorry property global globalization liberalization these are the principles of these capitalist world or economies these seven countries are the major such capitalist worlds uh, in the 1970s okay this organization emerged before the 1973 oil crisis 1973 oil crisis again it is a very you know very important economical development in the uh, global economical history let us not go into that aspect this group was meant to provide so what was the you know purpose of this grouping to provide a venue for the non communist powers see this is the capitalist world that means non communist countries to address the pressing economic concerns which at the time included the inflation see in the 1970s before the 1973 there were various economical crises so they were associated with the inflation recession okay sparked by the opec oil embargo or opec oil embargo organization of petroleum petroleum exporting countries it had you know uh, put some of the ember uh, yeah. embargo on the oil export it has caused caused the you know oil crisis in the world because of this oil crisis there were various tensions across the world it it has led to the inflation and the recession so world was facing such issues so to address such pressing economic issues in the world this organization took the birth okay now originally there were four members when this organization was set up in the 1973 there were only four countries they were united states of america united kingdom west germany and the france okay this west germany as i said this is the cold war era during the cold war period the germany was divided into east germany and the west germany west germany which was belonged to the capitalist world it became the part of g7 grouping then Japan became the member in the same year in the 1973 itself the Japan became the member of these four country along with these four countries now after the uh, inclusion of Japan into this group it started to be called as the group of five countries so initially it took birth as the group of four with the addition of Japan in the 1973 it now became the group of five countries now in 1975 one more development takes place that uh, that is in 1975 france it was the hosting country for the g5 it invited the italy to join the group see g4 was there with the addition of japan now it has become g5 
in 1975 france invites the italy to join the group now now upon upon joining of the italy into this group the g5 will become the g6 group of 6 the meeting during 1975 after the oil crisis was just over see they again discussed some of the several major economic issues during that time in the france summit of g5 uh, they discussed something what was that they those issues were related to the global oil crisis collapse of the bretton woods system what were the two bretton woods organizations can you tell me what are the two major Bretton Wood institutions that they are also called as the Bretton Wood twins? What were they? Can you comment on the comment box? See, if this grouping G5 plus, sorry, G5 plus Italy, G6 discussed the ongoing global recession. Still recession was, you know, reeling uh, throughout the world. The summit announced the commitment to promote the free trade. Yes. Free trade, so now it is a global economy. I said we, most of the countries are integrated into the global economy. This was not the case during the 1970s. They were, you know, uh, tried or they committed these seven, six countries committed themselves to, you know, uh, promote the free trade in the world. That means pr trading without the taxation system. That means no custom duty or no import duty on the goods to be exported or imported. Free exchange of the good. That is the open and the free trade. Multi they committed to practice the multilateralism, cooperation with the developing world and rapprochement with the Eastern Bloc. This Eastern Bloc, Europe again was divided into uh, different blocks. Eastern Bloc was, you know, uh, was belonging to the communist country. That means USSR, they tried to have the rapprochement with the Eastern Bloc of the Europe also. So this is what was discussed during the 1975 summit of the G6 countries. Now, one more interesting development. In 1976, in 1976, this summit was, you know, held at the Puerto Rico, that is in the uh, Central America. Canada was invited. In 1976, Canada was the major economy which was left outside the group of six. Now, this group of six are the six countries of the this grouping identified the economical development of the Canada. They recognized the ad advanced, largest and the advanced economy of the Canada. They invite now the Canada into their grouping. After the joining of the Canada in the 1976, now this G6 will become the G7. Okay g6 to g7 earlier it was g4 it became g5 g6 and g7 see now it has become the g6 after the addition of japan it became the g5 after addition of italy it became g6 now after addition of this canada now it has become the g7 okay because canada at that time in the 1976 it was the large largest next largest that means after those six countries canada was the next largest and advanced economy that is why these countries you not know, invited that country into their uh, grouping now it has become the g7 this puerto rico summit of the 1976 this is the first major summit and the first summit of the g7 whatever the g7 we have now it's a first meeting the g7 as a whole the group of seven countries they met for the first time in the 1976 at Puerto Rico. Do not confuse the earlier when it was established in 1973, 74, 75, 76. It was not the G7. There were less number of members. When it became the G7, when the seven members joined together, after joining of seven members, the first you know summit was in the Puerto Rico in the 1976. Okay. This is the first summit of the current G7 members. In 1976 summit, which was held in the UK, UK invited the European Economic Community. I said in the introductory you know, uh, remark that it has the seven countries plus one more member is there, that is the European Union. This European Union is the non-enumerated member. That means though it is in the grouping, its name is not included in the 
uh, I mean EAU is not included in the name of the grouping right that is why it is the non enumerated member this non enumerated member was included into the fold of this grouping in the 1977 UK as the hosting country it invited the EU then it was called as the European Economic Community UK invited this community to join the grouping in 1977 but this EU or the Econom European Economic Community, it joins and becomes the regular participant in the grouping from 1981 onwards. Though it was invited in the 1977, it started to attend every gathering of the G7 from 1981 onwards, okay, as a non-enumerated member. In 1998, one more development takes place. The Russia was formally joined the group. So far, Till 1998, G7, it was the group of seven countries. Now, one more member will add into this grouping, that is Russia. After joining of Russia into G7, G7 will be now converted into G8. Right? Now, 1998 means end of the Cold War era. Cold War ended in the 1991. USSR was collapsed. Okay, its communist form of government was changed. They also started to adopt the principles of capitalist economy. So, by recognizing the changing nature of the Russia's economy or the Russia's transitioning economy, these capitalist countries also uh, asked the Russia to join the grouping and Russia becomes the member in 1998. Now, what is the experience of Russia with the G7 countries? how the G7 has treated the Russia. Let us look into that aspect because this is very interesting development. Russia was part of this grouping and it was expelled out of the grouping. What are the uh, such interesting facts that led to the expulsion of the Russia from the grouping? Let us look into that. Yes, as I have said already, in 1998, Russia formally joined the group and G7 was converted into G8. Now, what was the condition of Russia in the 1990s? I said in 1991, Cold War was ended, USSR was disintegrated into different countries. There are 15 Commonwealth of Independent States or the CIS states which were born out of the uh, disintegration of the USSR. Now, out USSR now just started to be called, called as the Russia again. Russia plus 15 Commonwealth of Independent States were there. It was in the 1991. Now, what was the economical condition or general condition of the Russia during that time? Russia till the 1990s, it had never been a major advanced economy. Unlike these France, Germany, Italy or UK and USA, Russia was not a, you know, a economically well advanced country. It was not yet an established liberal democracy. See, there were leaders like Lenin, Stalin, they fiercely followed the communist principles or the Maoist principles in their country. So because of that, democracy was, you know, a very weak principle in that country. It was not a very well established demo uh, democratic, you know, uh, country in the 1990s. And it was also in a difficult transition, I said, after the disintegration of Russia, its economy was transitioning from communist country to the uh, democratic country, the from uh, communist economy to the uh, capitalist economy, the economy was taking a transition. Okay, so this is what the condition of Russia during the 1990s or you can say early 1990s. Though Russia was in a difficult situation, though Russia was not such a economically well, you know, developed country, then also it was invited, uh, invited into this grouping. Why? Why this was included? Because these G7 members were motivated by desire to encourage its political and economic reforms and international engagement. These G7 countries, which were the capitalist countries, they wanted to make Russia a capitalist country again. They wanted to take the Russia into their fold. They tried to bring the economical changes, to bring the economical reforms in this Russia. That is why they included the Russia into their folding. Now, but in 2014, Russia's membership was suspended. You know uh, very well that in 2014, Russia annexed the Crimean Peninsula of Ukraine. So because of that aggression of the United, sorry, Russia, it had to face 
some of the disciplinary actions from these G7 countries, rest of the G7 countries, okay, in 2014, its membership was suspended. So, but even after the suspension of Russia in the 2014, there were, you know, instances which led to invitation of Russia to join the grouping again. Some of the countries tried to, you know, um, uh, tried to uh, no, take the Russia back into its uh, folding. Let us look into that aspect also. The member countries in the subsequent years, that means after 2014, they expressed an openness to reinstate the Russia into the uh, G7 participation. Okay, some of the countries tried, but in 2017, Russia was very adamant. It said openly that it is not interested in the grouping it said it's a permanent departure from the grouping in the 2017 okay they it came out of the grouping in 2014 from next year onwards from 2015 onwards some of the member countries of the g7 they started to ask the russia to join the grouping back but after you know repeated requests and all russia finally announced announced its permanent departure it said i will never join the grouping again so but what happened in the 2018 g7 announced the further sanctions on the country for its intervention in the ukraine the country russia had annexed the crimean peninsula of the ukraine it was involved in the military activities but you know to prevent the russia from imposing more and more military operations on the ukraine g7 announced the sanctions on the russia that means economical punishment on the russia in the 2018 but what happens in the 2020 again united states of america and italy they advocated for the russia's return russia was involved in the uh, ukraine you know, prop, uh, crisis it was you know uh, militarily adventuring into the ukrainian waters now even though usa and italy they you know uh, ask the russia to join or to return back into the grouping but what happens only USA and Italy they asked the Russia to return into the grouping but rest of the five countries they expressed their uh, disinterest in the proposals of the Italy and uh, USA right Russia expressed its no interest though rest of the five members also said not to invite the Russia into the grouping but Russia again openly as it said in the 2017 in 2020 also Russia says no even if you invite into the grouping I am not going to join this group now this G7 grouping is criticized for, for being the small grouping there are only seven countries these seven countries are taking or they are discussing the very large issues which are concerned uh, globally right though they are financially rich they are they are liberal democracies but they are very small in number very small number of countries are not discussing the very you know big issues of the world so because of that some of the member countries themselves they have expressed to expand this grouping some of the other you know thinkers also advised this grouping to expand in the membership let us look into the that development also so first is the d10 strategy forum that means democracy 10 d10 means the group of 10 democratic countries okay uh, that is called as the d d10 strategy forum this forum was you know uh, created by the atlantic council this forum is being held since the year 2014 okay along with the g7 countries there are three more democratic countries they are australia south korea and european union okay these are you know g7 plus these uh, three members they constitute the you know membership of the d10 strategy forum but along with these democratic countries there are other democratic countries also these democratic countries like india indonesia poland spain okay they are also invited into this d10 grouping as the participating members in 2019 russia had signaled now russia says yes i am ready to join the g7 grouping but along with me turkey china and india should also be included it puts some conditions for the g7 countries see earlier g7 countries tried to bring the russia back into the grouping now the russia says yes i am ready to join the grouping but along with me 
द टर्की चाइना एंड इंडिया शुड ऑल्सो ज्वाइन दिस इज द कंडीशन पुट बाय द रशिया इन टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन इन टू थाउजेंड दैट मीन्स रशिया इज आसिंग टू एक्सपैंड दिस ग्रुपिंग इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी ऑल्सो अगेन यू एस ट्राइज टू एक्सपैंड दिस ग्रुपिंग इट सेज इट सिग्नल इट्स सपोर्ट फॉर द इंक्लूजन ऑफ ऑस्ट्रेलिया नाउ यू एस फेवर द ऑस्ट्रेलिया ब्राजील इंडिया एंड साउथ कोरिया प्लस री इनकॉर्पोरेशन ऑफ द रशिया now us is also in favor of expansion of the grouping russia also is in expansion of the grouping right even the d10 that means atlantic council who, this is the united states based council it also expressed to express the interest to expand the g7 forum again in 2021 one more development france and the united states now russia Uh, D10 forum, right? Other countries they showed interest in expanding the council. Now again in 2021, in 2021, France and USA again they proposed to include the Spain as a member in the country. See, different countries. India is getting chance. Russia is getting chance. Australia is getting chance. China is getting chance. Now Spain is also getting ch chance to join the G7 grouping. Okay. Again, uh, in the same year, in the last year, UK invited the Australia, India, and South Korea as the participants in the G7 meeting. This year also, recently concluded meeting of the G7, which was held just three four days back. In that meeting, again India was invited by the Germany. to attend the summit level meetings okay so in this way these different countries are trying to expand the membership of the council okay these are some of the instances now let us come to the very you know major question what has this g7 done so far what are the activities i said these are the economically rich countries they have uh, you know high sayings in the decisions of the world they are concerned about the major issues like the climate change or the security or the environmental pollution various issues are being taken up by this uh, grouping but what has this group done since the 1970s i said it it was you know started in the 1973 uh, till 2022 what has this grouping done let us look into that aspect let us look into its you know Uh, historical journey of this grouping in 1970s this grouping was founded to facilitate the shared macro economic initiatives to re in response to the com contemporary economic problems right in the 1970s i said there were the issues like the global oil crisis recession inflation such issues were there to address such issues this grouping was done uh, formed in the 1970s now in 1980s what happens instead of you know having only limited issues like the energy crisis or the global recession or the inflation or other shared democratic values now in the 1980s it expands its area of interest okay g7 broadened its areas of concern to include apart from those you know inflation deflation or the recession or the shared economic values now this grouping in the 1980s start to include the international security issues human human rights and the global security that means sec security and the human rights they are included as the areas of concern of this grouping in the 1980s but in 1919 1990s also this has done some of the very good you know um, you know initiative it, it has taken some of the very good initiatives like the debt relief program for the 47 heavily indebted poor countries 1990s that means uh, some of the countries got the independence in the 1990s just the uh, war was you know uh, got over so some of these countries they were struggling to reestablish their economies to reconstruct their economies they were struggling but these you know economically well developed countries they you know uh, provided the relief to uh, debt relief to the countries of the 47 42 heavily indebted poor countries you know it very well that there is a chernobyl disaster in the ukraine which was the earlier part of ussr to rebuild this plant nuclear reactor they provided around 300 million dollars of you no know, money to the uh, 
uh, damaged reactor of the Chernobyl. Then it established the Financial Stability Forum to help the managing the international monetary system. To bring the stability in the international monetary system, these G7 countries established the Financial Stability Forum. Okay, So these are the initiatives taken by this grouping in the 1990s. But in 1999, one more very important development takes place in the you know, uh, history of the world that is the formation of the G20. That means group of 20 countries. This group of 20 countries formed with the help of these G7 countries. This G20 is the this this G, this G20 also includes the G7 members also G7 plus 13 other economies they constitute the G20 okay G20 is a similar forum like the G7 it includes the next 13 largest economies I said G7 are the largest economically largest economies but after G17 13 major economies they now become the part of G20 okay why this was constituted this was constituted to promote the dialogue between the major industrial and emerging market countries these next 13 countries they are just emerging markets that means they are industrially they are developing but these seven countries they have industrially very well advanced their per capita income is more their spending capacity is more right to have the collaboration and to have the proper dialogue between the developed seven countries and the next developing 13 countries this g20 was created okay now in 2007 and 8 there is one more problem in the world that is the global financial crisis takes place our global recession takes place now the whole world was reeling under the economical pressure okay but some of the countries you know poor countries especially they thought or they expressed uh, their concern that the G g7 should help the you know economically struggling countries so in that regard g7 pledged to take the all necessary steps to stem the economical crisis it has devised an aggressive action plan that included the providing publicly funded capital infusions to the banks in danger of failing the global banks which were the larger blank banks they were struggling economically right those failure of the banks has led to the recession these g7 countries said that yes they are ready to help the uh, global banks so that the whole world can come back to the normal economical activities okay they it has devised the aggressive action plan in the 2007 and 8 period of time now these are the g20 grouping you see these are the various you know countries within the g20 grouping see this g this is the g20 it includes all the 20 members within this g20 there are seven members i said this g7 is also part of g20 g7 plus 13 other members this russia initially this was the part of this it was the g8 now there is no grouping called the G8, right? This is 7 plus 13 other countries. They constitute the G20. These are the member countries. Now in 2014, as I said, the Russia was expelled. It was suspended from the G8 meetings because of the its you know military intervention in the Ukraine, right? Now in 2021 again russia was in it was continuously involved in the affairs of the ukraine g20 took the strongest stance against the russia's for the destabilizing behavior and malign activities in the ukraine so these are very harsh wordings against the russia destabilizing behavior that means it is destabilizing the security in the region it is destabilizing the economical development of the country and malign activities in the ukraine then it called the Russia to address the international cyber crime attacks. So Russia was supporting the criminal act, cyber crimes from its soil. These seven countries decided to stop such internationally, uh, international criminal, sorry, cyber crime attacks which are originated from the Russian soil. Okay. Then in 2021, these G7 countries committed themselves to help the world to recover from the global COVID-19 pandemic. Yes, globe, world was witnessing the COVID pandemic. These G7 countries, you know, initiated the actions against the problems of the COVID-19 problem uh, pandemic. 
then it encouraged the further action against the climate change and biodiversity loss yes these are the common issues are the major areas of concern of this grouping now to in 2022 in the very recently concluded meeting of this grouping they took some of the novel steps they are decarbonization of electricity sectors that means we are generating electricity from the thermal power plants they are, they are polluting in nature right this grouping g7 it said that it pledged to decarbonize that means electricity sector or the electricity will be generated without emitting any of the pollutants into the atmosphere that is called as the decarbonizing decarbonization that means zero emission of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere so they pledged that by 2035 all the electric electricity generated that will be free from the carbon dioxide without you know that means they are changing themselves into the uh, eco-friendly modes of electric electricity generation they also committed to an eventual phase out of the coal power yes yeah. they want to prevent the use of coal in the production of the energy okay but they did not give any deadline see they said they will decarbonize the electricity sector electricity sector by 2035 but they did not tell the uh, the target period for the coal power that, that that means the phasing out of the coal in their countries okay this is what though there is no deadline for the you know phasing out of the coal coal but these are the very important with respect to the climate change or the uh, environmental pollution these are very important steps taken by the g7 members in the 2022 meeting okay let us come to the g7 summit in the germany recently in 2021 the g7 held the summit in the germany let's look into that this is the 48th g7 groupings summit in 2022 right the theme of this summit was progress towards an equitable world that means equitable worlds means egalitarian world economically equal world right they are trying to establish the equitable world right this meeting or the summit was held in the Schloss elmo in the bavarian alps of germany so this is the place name right uh, in the germany alps you know mountains uh, germany is known for the uh, the young fold mountains called the alps also right germany had invited in this grouping or in this meeting in the germany germany invited the india also recently the prime minister of india went and took participation in the g7 meetings and he delivered the address regarding the fu clean fuel uh, poverty reduction uh, i mean uh, right these are the major areas of concern of india in the uh, in this meeting we, germany also had invited the argentina indonesia senegal and the south africa as the partner countries now along with these you know member countries are the and the participants there are other organizations also which took the participation they are the united nations world health organization world trade organization international monetary fund and the world bank they are also uh, not uh, took the participation but they fixed the next venue of their you know meeting that is the next presidency will be of japan japan will be the next hosting state in the 2023 now what are the major outcomes of this meeting i said in 2022 germany was the host and they deliberated on various issues what are the outcomes of this summit see first one is the communique they released one communique which is related to the defend of the universal human rights they committed themselves to defend the human rights all across the world you might have seen especially in the countries like the ukraine in the united states and the middle east various humanitarian issues are there various human rights related issues are there this group you know uh, committed itself to defend the human rights in the difficult situations also and it committed itself to promote the democratic values being the democratic countries being the liberal democracies they tried to promote the democratic values also in the world and rules based multilateral order and resilience of the democratic societies this is what the communique after the end of this summit says then they took some of the decisions on the ukraine also they are the, G, the g7 countries they re-emphasized their condemnation of the russia's 
they condemned the Russia for its illegal and unjustifiable war. Yes, the Russia has been dragged into the war with the Ukraine. This war is not being ended. It is, you know, crippling the world economy. It has caused some of the poverty. It has caused the uh, hungriness in other parts of the world. This grouping severely condemned the such actions of the Russia. Okay, but it has this grouping has helped the Ukraine. It it pledged or it it provided the Euro 28 billion as the budget aid to the Ukraine. Okay, and it strongly committed to support the Ukrainian reconstruction. That means economical reconstruction of the Ukraine because it has faced a lot of. Uh, war crimes it the ukraine has faced a lot of you know losses due to the bombings of the russia so this g7 countries have pledged themselves to reconstruct the ukrainian economy now in with respect to the energy they committed themselves to phase out their dependency on russia now russia has been expelled out of the grouping these as G7 countries now they have they are showing their disinterest against the russia somehow they want to uh, affect the Russian economy, the major way is to prevent Russia to export the energy. These countries, they committed themselves to phase out the dependency on Russia. That means they want to prevent the import of Russian oil into their economies. They ensured to secure the energy supply and reduce price surges by exploring additional measures such as price caps. Now, they will fix the price cap for the uh, world uh, oil that means in the oil uh, economy of the world they will fix the some of the prices against the oil so that the Russian oil cannot be imported at the highest cost okay the Russian oil will become cheaper so that the Russia will you know gain less and less from the export of oil okay with respect to the climate and the environment these leaders endorsed the goals of an international climate club club this is very important they endorsed the goals of an international climate club to accelerate the implementation of the Paris Agreement. To implement the Paris Agreement, which was signed in the year 2015, they created the climate club, okay, then highly decarbonized road sector by 2030. I said the electricity sector will be decarbonized by 2035. In the same way, this road sector will be decarbonized by these G7 countries by 2030. Okay, a fully or predominantly decarbonized power sector. Yes, power sector, road sector, they will be decarbonized. That means they will consume very less and less uh, fossil fuels. They will emit very less amount of the carbon dioxide. That is the decarbonization process. Now, they took the decisions regarding the investments also. They have launched the permanent, sorry, partnership for global infrastructure and investment Partnership for Global Infrastructure and Investment, that is PGII. This is the joint initiative of these seven countries to fund the infrastructure projects. This is very important. There are various other organizations called Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. This bank is related to or it is associated with the provision of the loans to the or uh, favorable loans to the countries in the region, in the Asian region. But these G7 countries, they pledged to provide the funding support for the developing countries, okay, for, you know, infrastructure projects in the developing countries. The major aim of this project are the Global Infrastructure Investment Partnership's major aim is to mobilize the 600 billion US dollar to the next, in the next five years. That means by till 2027 they will spend around 600 billion uh, european uh, sorry uh, us dollar to narrow the global investment gap there is a huge gap these people have identified the huge gap between the investment requirement as well as the status of the infrastructure development to fill that gap they have you know pledged to contribute 600 billion dollars within the next 5 years then just energy and transition partnerships. This is again the one partnership which was associated with the South Africa and the G7 countries earlier. Now, this partnership will be extended to the other countries like Indonesia, India, Senegal and Vietnam. These countries will, you know, get the collaboration of the or co coordination of these uh, G7 countries in the energy transition system. Then, with respect to the food security, I said because of the Ukraine war, there, there are, you know, 
problems with the rest of the in the rest of the world some of the countries they are literally facing the hungriness there is the very uh, less import of the food grains to the some of the other countries in the australia sorry africa right uh, other countries they are facing the loss uh, loss in uh, with respect to the very low import of the raw materials in that way other uh, world is facing problem especially in the africa the people are facing the food security related issues this grouping how this G7 grouping has increased the global food and nutrition security through the global alliance on the food security. This G7 has established one more alliance that is the global alliance on the food security. Through this alliance, now they will address the food security issue of the world. Now, uh, as a, as a major you know uh, principle or the major value of this organization, they have committed themselves to promote the democratic values. Okay, now they will also cooperate with the civil society and the partners, these G7 leaders will collaborate with the civil society and other partners to strengthen the resilience of the societies. They will promote the human rights online and offline. Even in the online, in the digital world, human right abuse or the abuses are take, taking place in the online platforms also. Now these people or the, these countries have committed to prevent such you know human rights uh, issues in the online also to address the disinformation and to achieve the gender equality. So these are the major decisions taken by the G7 countries in the 2022 summit. Now we have discussed you know such you know uh, members they are economically well advanced but uh, you the one question might be striking in your mind that why the china though it is the largest economy though it is the fastest growing economy though it is a highly populated country why this country is not included in this grouping right this is the very common question in every one of your mind these seven countries they have not included the china because the IMF and other main global institutions do not consider China as the advanced country. According to the IMF and other global organizations, China is not an advanced country or it is not the developed country like the other G7 countries. Then China has relatively very low net wealth per adult. That means it has the high population. But if you divide the wealth per head, there will be very limited wealth per capita in the China. Okay. And it has very low human development index also. Because of these factors, China is not included in the grouping. You might again think that why India is not included. The same factors will apply for India also. India has the high population. But the economic wealth, if you divide the economic wealth per capita, every individual will get the very less amount of wealth. So again, India's human development index numbers are very low, right? Uh, again, the IMF also does not recognize India as the advanced economy. See, because of these factors, China and India, they are not part of this G7 grouping. So this is all about the G7 a grouping and its recent summit in the Germany. Thank you very much for watching this video.